see. That's three rooms upstairs and three rooms downstairs, isn't it? In the kitchen. Oh, well, that makes six rooms, not counting the kitchen and the bathroom. Have you uh, taken the measurements? I have, Martha. Okay. I see you've got a garage, Mr. Anderson. Mr. Anderson? Uh, yes. Yes, I, I... I have a garage. Two car. Mr. Anderson? Well, it depends on the size of the cars. What do you think, Harry, huh? Well, what do you think? You, uh... You are leaving everything, Mr. Anderson. Except for a few clothes. Will the, uh, lady be collecting her things? No. And the, uh, kid stuff? No. Still a high price for Halifax. And it's pretty far from town. But if Mr. Anderson's leaving everything... Martha. I'll offer you, uh, 2,000 below what you're asking, Mr. Anderson. Not a dollar more. Uh, look, I, I, I'm leaving for Montreal tomorrow, and if you could just settle with my lawyer as soon as possible. You are leaving everything, Mr. Anderson. Uh, all, all except this. This. And the suit I was married in. Mr. Anderson? Mr. Anderson? Hmm? The principal would like to see you down in the staff room. Thank you, Reverend. Hey, what's the matter with Mousy? Staff. George, this is Miss Carter. 
As you know, George, uh, Miss Carter will be taking over with some of your senior students to, uh, well, to ease the burden. So you've taught here for 15 years, Mr. Anderson. That's right, isn't it, George? Just coming up for the gold watch. Three months and you qualify. You haven't poured your coffee, George. Here, let me. I haven't poured any because I don't want any. You're not feeling well, George? No, I'm sick. Sick to death of all of you. Now, really, George. Mousy, say it to my face. I'm sorry, Miss Carter, but Mousy is quitting. The whole stinking laboratory is yours. The gold watch. Forget it. Fifteen years. I only stuck it out because I had to support my wife and my son. Yes, my son who is not my son. Maybe the kids were right in calling me Mousy, but not anymore. Because I'm not a mouse, you hear? George Anderson is no mouse. Isn't it just beautiful? Laura wanted a solitaire. I wanted a solitaire. But David's father was an emerald, so I got emeralds, didn't I, David? Yes, Mother, you did. The last thing he gave me was a sapphire. <laughs> I hear the house is coming on well. Oh, yes, beautifully. Laura? He's a clever architect, my son, aren't you, David? <laughs> he designed all this, you know. His father was so proud. I'll be sorry to see you leave here. Wait till you see the new house. David, have you told Laura? About the wedding? Yes, I have. We were hoping we could persuade you. No, dear. I can't be persuaded. David knows that. I want you to be married as arranged. All I want is you to forgive me for not being there. But it would be so easy for I'm us to postpone. I'm quite adamant. It's a very happy occasion for you both. I'll be at the reception. But so soon after James' death, don't believe I could. Will you forgive me? Of course.
right there, okay? makes you think he's coming to Montreal. He sold the house. He quit his job. I just know it. Mom? Mom? I'll be with you in a minute. What about the court order? I'll never accept it. I'll try to see Simon. I don't know why. It just makes me terribly nervous. Now, everything is legal. There's nothing he can do about it. He knows it. Besides, there's no point in his coming to Montreal now, is there? Well, is there? I suppose not. Hey. I love you. And you would like your wife, your ex-wife, to act as executor? Yes. Uh, what are her Christian names? Laura. Laura? Laura Anderson. Anderson. Address? 3650 Long Ago, Montreal. Fine. Beneficiaries? Simon. Simon Anderson. Sole beneficiary? Yes. Uh, only on condition that even if his mother remarries, he keeps my surname, Anderson. And Simon Anderson, I take it, is your son? No. No, he's uh, my wife's son. <coughs> She was pregnant when you were married. I beg pardon? <clears throat> she was... <clears throat> she was pregnant when we were... when we were married. And will Simon's mother agree to such a condition, Mr. Anderson? She must. She will. I don't want you here. Will you get out? I just want to talk to you. There's nothing to talk about. You've no right to be here. The court order is against my seeing Simon. Not you.
This is my will, Laura. I've sold the house. I leave everything I have to Simon. Why? Simon doesn't need your money. Every cent. Read it. Look, George. I'm in love with a good man. We're going to be married. Please don't interfere. But you must agree to let Simon keep my name. No. Simon's going to have my new name. Well, I remember a time when you were very anxious for him to keep my name. Oh, stop it, George. At least I want him to have these. I won't be using them anymore. That's too dangerous for a child. I wouldn't want them the in the house. The aren't right, but you can erase the first letter. George, will you leave, or do I have to call the police? You're slipping, Laura. That's a bit low on your list of humiliations. There wouldn't have been any humiliations if you'd given me a divorce when I asked for you one. You didn't have to tell the whole world. What alternative did I have? Everybody I didn't want to hurt you. Everybody thought Simon was my son. Because you told them that, I gave George. I a name, a father for your child, when nobody else would. But that was the arrangement. We weren't in love. It, it was a deal. Don't pretend it was anything else. It was fine. We were happy. It was empty. We were never happy. Everything I did was for you and for my son, Simon. Simon is not your son. I want him to have my name. Well, Laura, look, Laura, please. It's a good name, Simon Anderson. Please let him keep my name. Hello. Please, Laura. Police. Will you send someone around to my apartment, please? 3650 Longville. There's a man I want to get rid of. Apartment 2B. That's right. 2B. Thank you. I hate you. Sorry, darling. You probably think I'm a complete hysteric. It, it was really awful. Look, I'll call his lawyer in Halifax tomorrow morning. He must have left a forwarding address. Can I have a cigarette? Yeah. I'll put a private detective on him. At least we'll know where he is. All right? We'll be married in a couple of days, and you'll be out of here. How far is the house from Montreal? Miles or minutes? Minutes. Oh, not too far. About 25, I guess. Marvelous. And it's totally isolated.
It's all right. Can you see George? Don't turn around. You'll give the game away. What's he doing here? Well, he won't do anything. He just wants to upset you. Go in now. Use the side entrance. I'll be with you in a minute. What do you want, Anderson? Why don't you leave Laura alone? Beat it. I think he's really convinced that Simon is his son. Made himself believe our lie. Then eventually, I... I think he fell in love with me. In a way, I feel sorry for him. One thing is true. He didn't break the arrangement. I did. And then you met me. And then I met you. I'm so afraid he'll try to destroy what we have. Mm. So afraid. There's no way. No way. So Madame is happy? Oh, yes, Andre, very. Thank you. It's beautiful. Now we pray for the good weather. <laughs> Only two more days. Monsieur Andre? Excuse me.
Here they come. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Don't, David. Leave him alone, please. Get in the car, Laura. Simon! Simon! I was a good teacher, biology. Well, 15 years, George. I almost got to go watch. I told him what they could do with it. <laughs> I had trouble dissecting a frog, you know, messy, wiggly. Yeah, I can imagine that. Mousy. Huh? <laughs> they call me Mousy. <laughs> have another. Hey, you like this suit? Yeah, sure. I got married in this suit. Hey, you got married today, huh? No, my wife got married today. <laughs> I went to the wedding, but I wasn't invited. <laughs> <laughs> My son, Simon. Oh, <laughs> good hockey player. Sure. Here's another drink. Hey, look, Mister. Uh, don't you think you just ought to go on home? I want another drink. Come on, Mousy. Give me a break, will you? I'm no mouse. I'm no mouse. You're following me. She sent you to spy on us. Got a cab. Keep away from me. Keep away from me. You keep away from me. I warn you. You tell her too. You stop following me.
Department? Night. Before midnight, I'm going to kill somebody. Doesn't matter what my name is, but I want everyone to know. I don't know who, and I don't care because the killing tonight is just a warning. Just a warning. <laughs> No milk. Kids. <laughs> they put uh, black paint in all the dryers last week. Is that yours? Oh, no, I, I don't have any washing. I, I, I just came out of a cold. Yeah. It really is awful out there tonight, isn't it? See if I could retie this. It's tricky with one hand. Oh, hey, let me help you, huh? Yeah. Oh, thank you. Oh, you need a clean bandage. Look at this. That's the you can do anything with yeah. that. Um, I'll tell you what. Um, I only live across the street. What, two blocks up? While all that's happening, why don't I go and get you a clean bandage and do a whole Florence Nightingale bit, huh? It, it, it won't take a minute. You sure it's all right? Sure. I, I mean, it's, it's awfully late. I'd love to. Uh, you come with me and I'll give you a good cup of coffee, too. Thank you. Come on. Wash, will you? No, I won't forget the wash. You're going to be late if you don't get a move on. Yeah, I know. You got to go and uh, pick up the laundry before 12, because they cut the power off and everything stops. Lights, machines, everything. Even the door's automatic. But you can get out, but you can't get in. That one goes nuts if she's got to wear the same slip two days running. Hey, um... Why don't you take off your coat, huh? Oh. <clears throat> Thank you. Uh, may I use your... Uh... 
Yeah, it's down there, at the end of the hall. Um, she's gonna be gone in a minute, so if she's in there, you just kick her out, okay? I forgot my keys. You haven't seen them, have you? I can't remember. Oh, well, maybe I left them in the bedroom. Here they are. Oh. Bandage ready? Sandra. Yeah. It's a very nice name. <laughs> yeah. You know, I'm glad I met you. I wanted to meet someone like you tonight. So easy. What? Well, I mean, because I'm really very shy. Oh. What kind of work do you do? Teacher. Biology, and you know what all the kids call me. Guess what? Mousy. Mousy? <laughs> that is cute. Yeah, because I'm quiet, shy, never do what I set out to do. Good night, Sandra. Because of you, I shall do what I set out to do. Hey, what are you doing? I don't want to get any blood on my clothes. Blood?
passing. Ik ga hem zien op plek. Alleen zijn mama is er? Ja, het is een dollar als je op plek. Merci. Ticket to Halifax. Round trip, sir? One way. One way. 3680. Thank you. Thank you. Hold on, hold on. Hey, honey, good news. He's gone back home. A one-way ticket. is in Halifax. Anyway, I've written down the phone numbers of the new house for you. I put them on the table by the door. Thank
Not telephone, are you? Uh, inspector. Everything okay? Fine. Yeah, okay, Harry. Look, give me a call when the thing is ready, all right? Yeah? Have you seen Mr. Richardson yet? Yeah, Harry, it's fine. The phones are done. Thanks. I wouldn't know him if I fell over him. <laughs> That's not going to do us any good. David. What are we supposed to do? What do you want me to say, Mr. Richardson? Would you rather we went now? Just finish up and out of here by noon tomorrow. Come on, Laura. What should we do about Simon? Uh, the place is a mess. He might as well stay at Mother's tonight. I'll give her a ring later. And see what he's done to the study. Could you leave a wake-up call for me, please? Right, sir. Uh, 10 o'clock, no later. Sure. Uh, remember, the checkout time is 12 noon. Uh, I mean, tonight. Oh, okay. 10 o'clock tonight.
David. Mm -hmm. What's that? It's a newspaper clipping. I found it in the bedroom. A young girl was murdered last night. I just thought it strange that someone should uh, cut it out so neatly. One of the builders. We may have a plumber who's an expert criminologist. <laughs> I'd like to speak to Mr. Richardson. He's not here. I must contact him. Well, how can I let you see my son when he's not here? Would you do me the favor of letting me telephone him? Is it so urgent that it won't wait till tomorrow morning? I'm afraid it is. I must contact him. Who are you, anyway? I'm employed by Mr. Richardson. Oh? It concerns Mrs. Richardson's first husband. I'm from the agency looking into the matter. Well, we... I thought that business was completed. Mm. So did we. I'd be most grateful if you'd let me make that call now. Well, I'm afraid I haven't got his new number. Oh, I have. He gave it to me. Three nine three two four three five three eight four. Oh, of course. I'm so sorry. Uh, excuse me. Won't you come in, please? Thank you. I hope you'll forgive my caution. Not at all, Mrs. Richardson. It pays to be cautious. I'll show you to the den. You know, I've never questioned Laura or David about the man. I was just so relieved to think the whole thing was over. Tell me, what sort of person is he? George Anderson? Yes. Is he violent? Well, there are many things about him I can't understand, but... I would say that he is not a violent person. I get afraid. He might try to hurt Simon. No. I'm worried. He would never hurt Simon, Mrs. Richardson. Thank you. Uh, this may take quite a while. Take your time. This is George Anderson. I'm speaking from your apartment. My apartment? Yes, in your study. Picture of Laura beside me. Beautiful orange lamp. You live very well, Mr. Richardson. What do you want? I want you here immediately and by yourself. Without calling the police, without calling anyone. And if you're not here by 15 minutes to midnight, I leave and I'll take Simon with me. What do you want from me? Never mind what I want you for, Mr. Richardson. Just be here, alone. I'll telephone Laura and make certain she hasn't left with you. It's a quarter after 11. You have 30 minutes. Do exactly as I say. And don't forget. Although I never heard Simon. Your mother's here. Understand? I understand.
Daddy? Yeah. Didn't want to wake you up. What are you doing here, Mom? Says... Yeah, I know what Mom says, but I want to see you. I miss you. Did you break your glasses? <laughs> it was an accident. And it hurt your hand, too. No. That was an accident, too. Like school? Yes. Mm, it's a nice room. Started hockey? Not yet. It's too early. Oh. <laughs> See? Brought your present. Can I open it, Daddy? No. Tomorrow. Tomorrow, huh? Like Christmas. Yeah. Just like that. Here. Christmas. <laughs> Better go back to sleep, huh? Okay, will you come and see me again? You like me to? Well, we'll see. You go to sleep now. Good night, Sam. Good night, Daddy. Close your eyes. Operator, get me the police.
Mother? David? I was just looking in at Simon. in his room, fast asleep now. You saw the clipping I left for you? Clipping? In your bedroom. You mean of that girl who was murdered? Yes, I did it. You? Little Mousy. I'll call you in five minutes. And in 15 minutes, at midnight, isn't that the usual hour? I'll be there. We'll be together. He said he was coming back? Yes, he said he was coming back with my son, with David. I better call Laura. You see, he said they'd spoken. It's dead. Is there another phone? The caretaker's downstairs. David, George just called. She says he's called. We'll call again and we'll be there in 15 minutes. Let me speak to her. I'm now leaving now. I'll see you as soon as I can. Yes, sir. Headquarters the the inspector wants to talk to you. See you in a minute. You'll never make it. Now, besides, I need you here. Well, you're crazy. Time. i got to be there. Now, please, stay. Look, you'll be no use in a car. I need someone who knows uh, the layout of the oh, house and Herman, grounds. I want you to trace Mrs. Richardson, I've asked your husband to stay here with us. Now, That's please, you must three, listen three, very carefully. Two, four, three, Police five, cars are three, on their way four, to you now, so five, there's no three, cause one. for alarm. If he keeps his promise and calls you back, I want you to keep him talking as long as you possibly can until we can trace the call. We've got to play for time. Yes, as soon as he hangs up, I want you to call this number. Montreal 930-4242. 930 I said in five minutes. George, why? Did you call David? <laughs> David, he should be Goliath. He's such a big, strong man. But where is he? Did you say goodbye? You've got ten minutes left. George, uh, don't, don't hang up. Why? You want to have the call traced? Oh, no. Sure, sure. I'll give the police two minutes. But I called the police last night, told them I was going to kill somebody. They didn't stop me. Nothing they could do. The police. Are you listening, police? You think you're so smart. You think you know everything, you know nothing. Where's the detective you and David put on me, huh? Did he report in tonight? No. He'll never report in. Where is he? I'll tell you. The nearest phone booth is two miles to the south. Cars are on the way, Inspector. Why are they taking so long tracing that call? A dime just put in the second booth in the men's room at the Windsor Station. I think that should give them enough time, Laura. Don't you? Ready or not, here I come. Trace the call. Laura. 
Don't worry, darling. They've traced the call. Where is he calling from? Let me speak to your wife, Mr. Richardson. Mrs. Richardson, I want you to listen very carefully and act very quickly. Whatever you do, try not to panic. I want you to go as quickly as you can to the front door and open it as quietly as you can and get out. We've traced the call. Anderson is upstairs in your husband's study. of the ground floor layout. Mrs. Richardson, do what I say as quickly and as quietly as possible. Any noise will give your position away. Now, first, take your shoes off. Don't try to break any windows or force any locks because he may be in the next room. You think you can do that? I want you to make a noise at the whole end of the kitchen. I want you to slip quietly into the dining room. Keep one room ahead of him, working your way up the stairs, okay? Then, when you get up, Spectre. Laura, upstairs in the attic, there's my gun. David, I think they hear him on the stairs. Laura, do exactly as the inspector has told you and get that gun. Go on, darling, go on. Twenty, twenty-five, thirty, thirty-five, forty, forty-five, fifty, fifty-five, sixty, sixty-five, seventy, seventy-five, eighty, eighty-five, ninety, ninety-five, a hundred. Ready or not, you shall be caught in your hiding place or not. What can 
I do, Inspector. Telephone your study. Why? We'll ring on both phones and try to distract him. She must be up in the attic by now. David. Laura. The lights are back on. Do what I told you, Laura. Get into the attic and find that gun. You took him away, and you gave him to another man. Stop! With me! Stop! Stop! With me! Like a frog, messy and wiggly. Like that day at school when I tried to kill it, and I couldn't. They all laughed at me. And when I came home, Simon asked me, why do you call me Mousy? I spanked him, but I loved him. He knew I loved him. I, I wanted him to grow up to be a man. I was never too hard on him. I was a good father. And I was a good husband, too. I was a loving husband. Love me. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> 